The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my brother, my brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Hey, Griff, what's wrong? Why are you being so quiet? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a skit. Oh, I did, oh. I, oh, I didn't want to worry you guys, and I'll cut this out, but it's going to be a sketch. I know it's a sketch. I'm playing okay, along. We're trying to lead into the. No, hey, and I'll cut Chris, this part. I'll cut this part out. About? But I didn't want the two of you guys to be afraid. Okay, let me. I'll get back in now. Well, I'm just. I'm so scared of. Um, listen, listen. I'll cut that out too. Listen, the PGA Tour has made has marched on Austin and taken over the town, and PGA? there's PGA. Yeah, professional golfers. All right. And they've made their way to Austin. I, all the weirdos from South by just left. And in the void they left, all these rich jocks showed up and started just golfing wherever the fuck they wanted. I don't know if the oh, PGA no. Tour has ever been in the city where you live, but it's just like <laughs> my house is covered in holes from their powerful drives that they just blast right through. Are they Lori, doing like and one street golf? They're doing and one street golf, extreme street golf. I saw Rory McIlroy. First of all, he's been tormenting me because he says he he keeps saying I want it back, and that's what he sounds. That's what he sounds like as he yells at me and my family through the windows of my house, and he, while he's blasting me with balls. Um, but then Wait, I see once, once what back the name, I guess, even though it's spelled different. I told him that, but then a ball hit me in the head, and I went to sleep for an hour. Oh. Um, but I did see him playing some extreme street golf with the other big golfers of today. Um, name three other ones. Yeah, sure. Rory McIlroy is one. Well, you already said that one. Three other ones. One, that, and, and you know, three other ones that don't have your name. Let's just, like, go for it. Okay. Can I do Tiger? Yeah. 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 Tiger's, Tiger, yes. Jack Nicholas. The Golden Bear. Golden Bear. <laughs> and I think there's one named Buddy. Anyway, he's. I saw Rory McIlroy take a golf ball and run and slam dunk it into a hole that he made in the street. That's a pothole. Now my son's going to trip in. Um, it's real tough stuff. It's real tough. I would think after we got rich from the Max Fun Drive that I would start liking golf more. Mm. But it's the way they're doing it is very riotous. It's very destructive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just a quick side note. Thank you, everyone who donated. We're recording this on the Wednesday uh, previous, so I have to assume we just ended up I at like 60,000 new and upgrading. Donors. I assume we're extremely wealthy. Travis, pass me one of those Cohibas that I purchased prematurely and will eventually regret, I'm yes, sure. Of course. Griffin, have you thought about getting super good at it yourself to like, well, if you can't beat them, join them and then beat them? Uh, I mean, I've been thinking about it. Slide me one of those stinky smoke logs, too, while you're at it, Travi. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> it's just for let looks. Me, let me light it with this other oh, no, no, no. stinky. It, it's just for looks. I don't light it. Um, I And so I thought about getting good at golf, Travis, but, you know, my, mel, my elbow. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sorry I forgot about that, Griffin. So I if forgot you hear, about the hinge and the flaps in there. If you hear a loud smash and then a, uh, you know, or maybe a four and then a smash, uh, it's because the PGA Tour has uh, is doing it in Austin. The end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Griffin, look out behind you! A golf ball's coming your way. Uh oh. That was supposed to be my glass breaking noise. Fuck. Fuck me, Justin. God, you know what? what? What's, what's it weird? Still work. <laughs> What's weird is I have Seinfeld glass uh, in every window of my house, and it's great because it's insular, which is great because it keeps the AC in in the hot summer, And but the only bad thing is when it smashes, like when Michael Richards jumps through it, it doesn't make the traditional noise. It does make the boigabon wow wow. 
Should I have a, Mike, a Michael Richards, more Michael Richards representation on the soundboard? No. I think the only sort of clip that he's known for would not work very well on our show because of <laughs> how our horrible. Format. Yeah, how horrible it is and he is and all that jazz. Well, this is an advice show that is funded by you, the listeners. And uh, we do appreciate you just not to harp on it, but it's like it re- we have a lot of fun here, but it really means a lot to us. So thank you so much for your eternal support. Um did I not mention it was an eternal pledge you were making? <laughs> yeah, this Damn. is forever. <laughs> yeah. This is forever. Uh, let's get into the advice. I work in wildlife rehabilitation. One week into this job, I was cleaning one of the owl's enclosures. Justin, and- did you use your new fi- found Max Fun Wealth to buy a new narrator voice? Yeah, it's nice. It sounds like you've got four or five Cohibas going in there. Do you know what's irritating? What? Uh, why, one of the reasons I really don't enjoy you guys, and wow, this is much more of a professional, <laughs> it's more of a professional relationship at this point than a familiar one, yeah, is huh? because I was in my head thinking like, this is sounding good. <laughs> I was thinking like, I was, there, I was, I was already <laughs> gr- congratulating myself for how well I was reading it and not stumbling or messing it up at all. And then you fucking dill wheat. It was nice. It was good. It, yeah. It was like, I just wanted to finish it with like my streak. All right. Try again. Yeah. I work in wildlife rehabilitation. One week into this job, I was cleaning one of the owls' enclosures, and when I turned to leave, she attacked the back of my head. She didn't draw blood, but I definitely felt her talons graze my scalp. It was startling as fuck. And since then, the owl and I have had a strained relationship. I feel like she hates me. How do I learn to trust this animal again? And that's from living in fear in Louisiana. Sounds like you need to get the animal to trust you. First yeah. and foremost. Mm, mm, and with mm. owls, that that's a tough one. That's a tough one with owls. They're a tricky, they're a tricky one. Cause um of the ill omens and all that. Yeah. Uh, sure. You, you could throw up a, you know, field mouse for them to catch and play a big game with that, but then you know, the field mouse certainly is not gonna trust you at that point. You can you can try to do something behind an owl's back, but it's just gonna turn right the fuck around and see it with that crazy head they have. That Here's weird my head. When you were attacked, did you snitch on him? Did you go tell like the head of the wildlife or maybe the owl was testing oh, to see if you could keep your mouth shut? That's amazing. When I was in elementary school, uh, I, my, my, my friend, well, we were more acquaintances. John cut in front of me. He had about a foot and a half on me and he cut in front of me in the four square line. I said, Hey, you just cut in front of me. And he slapped, he slapped me on the face and, oh, God. and, and the God, I guess somebody, school was tough. Huh? Yeah. And I guess somebody reported it and we got sent to the principal's office and I didn't fucking snitch. And me and John were so tight from that point on. So that's one way to do it is to just keep your cool about this owl and then you know maybe they'll apologize no blood drawn which first of all good scalp you got there yeah, holy tough shit one. tough one yeah if this but like if this owl had wanted to fuck you up oh yeah he'd be fucked up yeah this was the, this is the owl sending a message here's where you, you've already ruined it you've already botched this as bad as you possibly can if an owl does this you have to sp- uh, owl tax your scout spin around in one smooth motion and punch it in the face. Yeah. Oh. And then it's like dominance, respect. Hey. Yeah. It'll hey, give you this kind of like, okay. Look, huh? all right. right. I get it. I see We're what's happening. You and I. And respect. It, and then you fight. And if you beat it, <laughs> it's not ready to go out into it is not rehabilitated yet. <laughs> that, is right. a, that is a good, it's a good question. Like, uh, wildlife rehabilitation it doesn't ma- mention rehabilitation for what so maybe this is always a bad seed kind of owl and it's just acting out <laughs> it's a behavioral rehabilitation <laughs> yes it's got a problems with authority it's got disassociative personality disorder it's got some antisocial tendencies and it just uh it just doesn't like people that much so it's just saying like hey i'm not fine i may see fine i put on a brave face i'm still kind of kind of messed up i need to chill here for a little bit longer listen can i tell you something question asker owl attacked human that seems pretty normal to me actually yeah like i that that's seem- i think it'd be weirder if you walked in there and like the owl like waved at you happy to see you the owl's not ready to go back out there like that mm-hmm. owl attacks you that owl is ready to be on its own <laughs> that you yeah. should go back and be like hey the owl attacked me and they'd be like oh that's good news that's I'm so pretty, yeah, cool hey that owl's fucking fine yeah let it go it's fine <laughs> It's doing what owls do. I think the Japanese owl cafes got all the nice owls already, <laughs> and there's none left for the rest of us. Let's make room for a timid bird. Sure. 
Um, I've got a Yahoo here. Can I read it? Yeah, please. Uh, this one was sent in by Level 9000 Yah, Drew. Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's from Yah, Drew Answers User. They're anonymous. I'm going to call them um, uh, No No Asks. Why don't scientists make military armor from bug shells? Yes. Bugs have hard shells that scientists can backwards engineer manufacture in their laboratories. If you take a bug and you uh-huh. make the bug as large as a human or even bigger, no oh. gun would penetrate the shell. Also, shells from bugs can be regenerated. Imagine having armor that can regenerate itself. Wait, what? Say again? Shells you from see there, question asker. Shells from bugs can be regenerated. Imagine having armor that can regenerate itself. Okay, so right? You went, you went some ways that I used them to make material. Okay, great. Engineer a bug as big as a human. Wait, yeah. No. Wait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. This is a little old lady who swallowed a fly. <laughs> the enemy army has beaten us because their their new cool guns get through our get through our armor. Well, I'm gonna take this uh, this Goliath beetle. I'm gonna make it uh, like way bigger than us, and then so I guess I'll try and take its skin and wear that. Yeah, sounds like a good plan to me. Boop 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 boop. I've been gored by the Goliath beetle. <laughs> And I, now, I really and that boop, 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 coming. boop, it covered three minutes. Three uh, minutes elapsed. Uh, it was really bad. Um, you know, I also, I don't know, listen, I'm not a bug expert. That should surprise no one. But I'm pretty sure if you, like, peel bug armor off of it, it's not like, ah, oh, totally cool, I'll just regrow that. I'm pretty sure what you're talking about is, like, its skin, Maybe. I mean, I can get skin back when it falls off sometimes. So who hmm. knows how bugs do it? Um, they're littler than me, so I assume they can't. They don't have all of my remarkable human powers. Um, <laughs> they can't drive. But I. Can, but at the same time, if I shoot a ladybug, the bullet won't bounce right off that because is they're true. very, very powerful chitin. And I guess what, what I'm wondering is how m- can I wear a big ladybug? Or why not just get a bunch of ladybugs and wear them all at the same time? And now we've gotten good. to it. Yes. Home Alone 3, the ladybug lady. <laughs> um, hey, that was wh- the plot wh- of the Rodney Dangerfield movie, Ladybugs. <laughs> yes. What what human power would you trade away mm. for chitin? For mm. chitinous plates? Hmm. Um, <sighs> you know, maybe empathy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes. 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 Um, my my brother, my brother, and Giver. This uh, this chitinous cyborg, free of emotion. Um, I would say jumping. I can't, I just wouldn't be able to. <laughs> yeah, it's a great I can, point, Griffin. Yeah. Great point. Underused. Hardly using it for anything yeah, anymore. I don't, I, if you think about it, guys, I, I'm trying. To, let me stop and think about the last time I jumped. Let me think about the last time that I ju- I had cause to jump. Uh, yeah. I, you think about that in like in like a lot of uh, some like the hard like the from software games like the hardcore action games. It's always note of it is made like you can't even jump. Like, yeah. well, so what? And, what and you know what? Jump? Somehow you, you beat jumping? the game. Yeah, who still jumps? I'm God, guys. I swear, I'm trying to think of the last big jump I did, and I just I have I have nothing. I have nothing. It must have been to get over a rock or something, or to you know. Get the health potion. I don't fucking remember the last time I jumped. It may have been the last time I played basketball, which was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Justin, what about you? What human power would you give away? (sighs) They're all so great. They're all good. Gifts. I think it would be regrowing hair. Oh. I think I would be okay with, it's a roll of the dice. I know. I can't get any frosted tips that I later regret. Uh, I guess I could always diet, but no. I get this one hair and that's it. This is all the hair I have. But I do have this incredible bulletproof chitin yeah. that lets me clean up the streets of Chicago. You know oh. what? Along the, Now you've made me think, because you said this one hair, which made me think that instead of individual hairs, you just have one adorable baby Huey style No, but just more like top. your entire head of hair was one solid piece. A coiled right. rope. Yes, and I thought, here's what I would go with. Um, I would be willing to give up the space between my individual teeth to get Dream. bug armor. I would have just one big top tooth and one big mm-hmm. bottom tooth, one horseshoe shaped tooth. And I think I'd be amazing. 
That That'd actually be might be more powerful than individual teeth now that I think about it. You yeah. violated the spirit of the game then. Yeah. yeah. I was at my coworker's birthday. We're not super close, but it's civil. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I uh, want to stab them quite badly. Yeah, I'd like to stab them, but don't. That's what civil means. If it weren't for your human laws. Yes. I gave her a birthday card I keep in my glove box for emergencies. That's some next level shit. I hope you mean it emergency had... birthdays. <laughs> Not just like, oh no, flat tire. Use it, use it to stop the bleeding. <laughs> it had love you lots on the front in gold letters. I didn't think it was weird. I just thought the design was pretty. <laughs> when she read the front she said whoa I didn't know you felt that way really stepping up this relationship <laughs> <laughs> how do I live in this atmosphere I've created that's from platonic proposal in Chicago well congrats on realizing that this is completely your fuck up yeah, yeah. this is like if you're gonna get an emergency card it needs to say something like celebrate like just so, like I don't even think you want to go as specific as birthday no, it's like celebrate in the side. It's like, this is a day. Yes. Or on the Catch front, it. it just says occasion <laughs> exclamation it's, point. It's now. <laughs> occasion is now. The time is now for this day. Sorry. It, thank you. And congratulations. Yeah. This day is here and you are here too. You've made it to this day. Maybe more. <laughs> It could also just be a sort of innocuous compliment, like a uh, picture of a dinosaur, and on the inside it says, like, I think you're a dynamite. And then they oh, no, open Griffin. that and read oh. it, and they're like, oh, it's cool. That's ah, too cool. much. Oh, That's okay. Much. I can't, do you know how many times I've been at somebody's birthday, and I've realized, like, oh, I didn't get them anything. I really shouldn't get them anything. And then I'll, like, sit there on my phone and send them an iTunes gift card so from my bad. phone. Yeah. And then get the eye contact from across the room. Like, I don't mean for it to happen right then, but they'll get the <laughs> notification, like, bing, bing. Oh, hold on. I got a text from Justin that's, that's right weird. this second. It just says, I'm inconsiderate. That's weird. <laughs> it's that it, but it says, it says, I'm inconsiderate. Please enjoy the new Drake album on me. Wow. wow. $7, Justin. Thanks so much. I'll be cool. able to enjoy half an album. It's a problem with gift cards, right? It's a, the problem with gift cards is... You are saying here is exactly what you're worth to me. Yeah. Here's the exact dollar value that you are that I value you. This is um, that could have gone twenty. Uh, listen, I could have. Technology today, there should be an option when you purchase like a gift card online for someone to backdate it. Like they'll just wedge it in in their Gmail like five days ago, and it's like, oh yeah, we'll date it like you sent it on Monday. Don't worry about it. We got that. This. Is that is psychotic. What you just said, Travis. That is hey, a, if, I, we, if Tim if we, Cook's listening, you're welcome. Yeah, but if we do that, what the fuck are we all doing here on Earth as part of this one sort of beautiful <sighs> consciousness? If we can trick each other with uh, time time traveling birthday cards, well, I'm sorry, what are we Griffin, all doing I, here? I got rid of my empathy in exchange for this card. Ah, and shit. And you got me that you got me that empathy polish, and yeah. I got you that chitin polish. But oh no, how ironic! Well, I I can use the chitin polish. I just can't uh, jump to get it where you put it yeah, on the high shelf. I did put it on the high shelf. That was my it, fault. It, it was I. Uh, 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 it was, I'm recording this on Sydney's birthday, and Charlie asked uh, my my four year old daughter asked uh, what I got Sydney. So I showed her this gift certificate that I got, and it was really more of a, it was like one of the things they email you. I got uh, her, I, as I sponsored a um, a baby incubator for the, for like a, a nation in crisis where they don't have access to medical care. And I thought, well, that would be a lovely gift. My wife would really appreciate that. And I'm I'm showing this. It's got a picture of the baby incubator and everything on, on the thing. And I was showing this all to Charlie and explaining it to her. And I finished this whole explanation, and she took like three beats and said, why would she want this? <laughs> like, well, sweetie, she doesn't. And I, she doesn't. She do, she's not gonna. She said, "Mommy doesn't even have a baby. She won't like this." Like, okay, I, but it's a gift. But it's her birthday. It I know. Birthday. Okay, fine. Sorry, uh, you didn't even have to finish that story. I could have told you how it panned out when you explained to your four year old. I got mommy a something she won't be able to touch. And be right. something she won't use. Like, cool. That sucks, cool. Dad. Yeah, it sucks. 
Check out the, this this uh, this ceramic Jimmy Buffett parrot that I got at Hallmark. This is a gift. Yeah, Dad. I got her this bag of G. slime that I made her. Yeah. Um, so this is the longest we've ever gone without actually talking about the question because I think that that is the that is the severity of this mistake you've made. Um, terrible mistake. Terrible mistake. But mistake feels mis- the term mistake almost feels like it um, suggests an accident happened. You can't mm-hmm. look at the card that says. Uh, I what was it? Love you lots, and thank love you lots. You know what that? You know, love is subjective, yes. But I, we all sort of have a kind of agreement on what it means. And then lots, sure. is a, lots is a modifier, as if to say, a great deal of love I possess for yeah. you, and you uh, gave this to somebody who is not true for. I will argue though that it's not like this. The, the front of the card said, "I must tell you about my deep and very real feelings for you." It said in gold letters, "Love you lots," a thing one might write in somebody's yearbook. So, no, 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 no. 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 Love I would you say like, that love you like that, a love you like a sister. That's oh, exactly yes, that one's, that one's to fine. be forgotten. Yes, yeah. of course. I would say that. Have a part cool of summer. this blame, yes. Part of this blame does fall on the coworker who looked at a greeting card, since we purchased at a store that you handed them, and thought this is a declaration of true emotion, a but thing what's... no one should ever think when they look at a greeting card. What's anything? Greeting cards are man. Uh, Can we just talk I, about them for a second? I hope you've got Can... your finger on that fucking Seinfeld button. Yeah, light them up, Justin. Light them up, dude. Get this to get this uh, get this whole industry that's oh, existed ha- for thousands ha- of years and has definitely I- been the, the the butt of many many stand up routines. They're the worst, and I always get them because it feels like we should, we have to. And sometimes they're nice, but it just seems like yeah, hey, you're right. Just what a fucking hack. Hit it. No, okay, you're right. I earned this. <laughs> <laughs> now sit in that stew in that shit, <laughs> stew in it, and think about what you've done. Sorry, you're right. That, that's both for the question asker and for Justin. <laughs> yeah, we all we all made some mistakes here. Yeah. Um, you want another Yahoo? Okay, t- no, we didn't give any sort of help. Like, I want to help. Him a, send a, get him a, a card the next day that just says like, "No, I don't." No, I don't. Gotcha. I think you. I think you need to. Okay, you said it's been civil with this person. You're not really close. Fine. I think you need to. The relationship is now at a different level, yeah. right? It's obviously been escalated <laughs> to a different kind of relationship. I think you need to see how long you can sort of maintain that level of relationship. And maybe the like, uh, 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 nothing gold can stay. Perhaps the relationship will fade in time and you'll revert to this sort of like civil thing. The, but, the, but possibly... A dear friend yes. has yes. been made. Listen, this is the moment. Some Maybe sliding you've actually doors made have a dear opened. friend. Walk yes. through them. Mm-hmm. Walk through the sliding doors. Thank you, Travis. Yes. That is my official TM advice is I think give it a whirl. Just see if you can maintain it. You didn't plan to be here, but now you're here. It's like, you know, you got on the wrong home alone plane and you ended up in New York instead of uh, Florida or whatever. And you yeah. know what? Maybe have some fun in Florida. <laughs> Or in New York, I do want to rem- remind you, though, that isn't what happened. This person got on a plane that was labeled, get on this plane to go to Paris without your son, Kevin. <laughs> and then they were like, that sounds good. I'll try it. And then they got on the plane and landed and was like, Kevin. It's like, well, no, you remember. You saw the plane. Yes, but I, it was then, labeled. What, what, then what you are suggesting, Justin, is they have arrived and said, oh, wait, right. Kevin's my son. And I left him at home. Well, well, <laughs> I better have some fun in Paris while I can. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, mine's mine's not that helpful. Either. Your your scenario, Justin, makes it sound like Kevin McAllister is the victim in the Home Alone films. When I would argue that that is true of everyone else in his family, but not Kevin McAllister. Mm, yes, that's how that. Yes, I want to die on that hill. I've just, that's how you feel. I've just decided Kevin's not the victim here. It is the rest of the family. Not not the eight year old boy left home alone because his family mm. hated him and forgot about him. Well, hate is a strong word, don't you think? He's just uh, being a little pervert uh, to his <laughs> uncle, and so he doesn't get woken up for this plane ride. My, it's. I think a lot of it is perspective. We showed Charlie that movie for the first time about a year ago, and she was. I mean, for her, it's a horror movie, right? 
for year for for <laughs> months afterwards she talked about they left him alone which is the name of the film from her perspective yes. was they left him alone was the name of that film yeah. uh, but me I'm a father of two watching this as as a 38 year old father of two people I watch it from Catherine O'Hara's perspective and think yeah I get it <laughs> you know I get it you just want to r- relax your kid has zero chill you just want to relax in Paris for a little while you know they don't talk about all the time that Catherine O'Hara gets to sit in fucking silence you know <laughs> I mean that's should fair Catherine that's O'Hara like a- bought herself a day like at least a good 24 hours of just being able to sit in fucking silence it I is get a it, 14 hour flight there and like a 14 hour flight back where, yes, that, he, <laughs> she must have gotten on the plane, right, on the return and be like, I feel so terrible. But you can only maintain that feeling for so long before then oh. they bring you, like, the warm nuts and, like, yes. a, you know, glasses yes. sparkling and wine. You're and you're like, like, do you, okay. I actually haven't seen a movie in three years. Do you have movies on this movie? flight? Oh, you I do. Like, oh. I mean, I'm I like, do feel terrible, but I've been meaning to see if Greatest oh. Showman was a hit or miss. This my boy. <laughs> I hope the sticky men aren't going to get him. But um, can I take an airplane <laughs> wine nap now, please? Yes, <laughs> yeah, you so <laughs> oh, the seats recline all the way. Well, that's nice. Whoa, it would be right, a waste. Nice. Kevin would want me to check that out. All right, well, yeah, up. that's it. The, we're, we're the polka boys. That's nice. Anyone holding? Is anybody holding? <laughs> I haven't smoked that's, weed since nineteen seventy-seven. So this is probably fine. Yeah, that's the only, only unrealistic thing is this motherfucker start playing tuba and she doesn't bury a shiv in one of their throats. Like, please, this is my moment. Why, Just let me be. Why do we talk about Home Alone so much? It's a touchstone, apparently a cultural so touchstone. Much. I would say we do talk about it a lot. Um, okay, uh, I have a Yahoo here. Can we talk about it? Okay, it's sent in by a few. Yeah, folks. we'll talk about that half as much as we talk about Home Alone. Yes, thank you, uh, everybody who sent this one in. It's Yahoo Answers user Fritz who asks. How did King Triton get so buff? Yeah, right? He lived underwater where there's no resistance. How could he get so buff? I'm not sure that your terminology is right here because I think water is all resistance. If that's the logic that you're using, then uh, mer folks who live in the water would be getting jacked from all the swimming that they do because that's exercise, folks. That's just exercise. I would say probably first heavy diet of plankton. Okay, mm-hmm. so he. Yeah. Okay, so he, he has a sort of. Yeah. He has a webbing <laughs> in, his, yeah. in his mouth, and we don't see that. But when he does extend his jaws wide open, you see the webbing get in there, and he does swallow up uh, a million things. And you know they're trying to play the the xylophone or whatever, and then they did get eaten. Mm-hmm. That would be rad if she walked on the land for the first time with her human legs and she just collapsed like, oh, my bones, my terrible weakened bones. Oh, she just collapsed because her gills were dried out. <laughs> She's mm-hmm. like, I don't have lungs. Um, But how did he get so jacked up, though? He's very strong. I don't know if you guys remember the movie, but he has a very strong upper body. In I mean, so. probably magic, right? Like, it's magic? a very magical culture. Well, that's true. I feel like that's kind of a bullshit answer, though, Trav. Like, just magic. That doesn't really move Okay, he works out 24 7. He's spotted by Sebastian. Is that what you want to hear? Swimming around is going to get you a good tail. Yeah. Like, everyone's going to have a good tail. I know you've, I, but like, usually their arms are just like gracefully behind them as they yeah. zip along. You don't Nothing's see a lot heavy. of like ripped, jack, huge chested dolphins. Yeah, you know, exactly. Well, what you really just said is wrong. They're all in the fucking muscle, man. The dolphins are all fuck muscle. I do not know if you ever touched one of these bad boys, but it is basically Yes, but they uh, don't have rocket. definition, Griffin. Yes, maybe, they've got the muscle mass. Yeah. But where's the but definition? The dolphin doesn't maybe, have a six pack. Maybe anytime King Trent's not on the screen, he's lifting sea rocks. He's just go, goes to his it. cave, and there's not a lot that, to do well, down there. That's what it is. He has one of those grottos where it's like you can swim, and it's like even though it's underwater, it's almost like sea lab, right? Where it's like <laughs> pressurized, so he can just like lift the top half of his body out, pump some iron, and then go back to swimming. What if every merfolk, or maybe it's just people who are sort of higher up the uh, the the ladder, uh, people who in the royal family, perhaps, or. Uh, people living in sort of the royal domain have this, and it is your own personal fight in octopus. And it's an octopus <laughs> that you and uh, you you fight. And so every time you see him go off stage, 
from the play of the movie. Uh, he blows up all his daughter's stuff and then is like, I'm a good dad. And then he swims away. And then you know, while Ariel's having a sad time in there with all her broken tchotchkes, uh, he's like, I, I feel so bad about what I've done to my daughter's collectibles and figurines. Ah, fuck it. Get over here. No fight! No fight! No tridents! No tridents! You're right. You're right. That's my bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I uh, I do love this idea that he has a secret rock gem somewhere though. Oh, yeah. The the as I I'll think of it, the grotto of gains, where he just goes and car carves himself out. Aquaman's too. Yeah, it's Aquaman him and too. Aquaman in there. You know Aquaman but, has secret rocks and an octopus that he fights. And, and he blasted up his daughter's collectibles because he's he bl- a real jackass. <laughs> that scene is wild in it. It's actually Batman. He shows up at Batman's house and Batman <laughs> sings a song about all of his great tools. And where Look did at all get my all these- cool stuff I built with all my where- money. Where do you get all these wonderful toys? Zap, zap, zap. Bzz, bzz. Oh. He uses his magic trident. What a good flick. Man, I've been a dad for only two years now, and Triton's got like eight daughters, and they all appear to be like, you know, teenage to older, so he's been a dad for a while now. What a fucking rookie mistake yeah. to be like, I know a cool dad move. Blast up all the shit she cares about. Yeah, of course she went to the Sea Witch, you dumbass. You drove yeah. her yeah. right into Ursula's arms, you piece of shit. It'd be cool if if Aquaman came down and because he's the king of fish, he like made Triton clean it all up. <laughs> you fix this, hey, <laughs> fix it, fix it. <laughs> you fucked up, Dad. You fuck fix it, asshole. Yeah, at, Triton should have immediately come back and be like, you know what? That was on me. Um, I'm gonna fix this statue. But I need to find some waterproof super glue, and yeah. then I will fix this. Oh, I think he just sent everybody else. Of, hey, everybody, go find more trash. <laughs> go get more trash for my kids. You need to find another statue that fell off a boat. Yeah, the way that this would actually play out is Aquaman would be like, "Clean this up. You're a bad dad." And then up half would be like, "No, get the fuck out of here." What do you? But then his butt would be like, "Oh, you're right. You're right." <laughs> Let me let me slap it around with my. T- is this helping? No, it's a clock. You can't just slap it with your weird fish tail and fix it. You blew it the fuck up. <laughs> ass, stop it. Ass, stop hey, it. fish I, ass, I'm get along. Hey, Who's in charge here? He Tracing is. Tracing a message to my daughter. <laughs> Not to like things. <laughs> Why has he got a beard? That's got to be bad under this under oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is matted. That's full of. I don't know, probably like bacteria. Maybe that's he, where he absorbs food from. That's where oh, he that's harvests his the feeding. micro. Guaranteed. Yes. Where's the scene of all the little fish that follow Triton around just picking bacteria and algae out of his beard? Yeah. Like, it's gotta be that's it's gotta be hard to get much protein down there for those muscles too. <laughs> you eat anything other than, you see you'd see a tasty little shrimp and it turns around to you and you're like, Oh hell yeah, I'm starving. Shrimp turns around, he's like, under the sea, like, under like, the ah, sea. Shit. Like, okay, fine, fuck, you're sentient. God damn it. I have a family. Oh. All right. Oh, I know your family. Yes, I know. You work for me. <laughs> you all work for me. <laughs> damn it. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a trip to the money zone. Also, none of them wear shirts. What's up with that? Mattresses. Mm. Okay. What's I'm that listening. about? Oh please. God! Get that! Hit the fucking! Can we please with the Seinfeld sort of formulation? Can we please? What? What? Because you, know, you know he's gonna do that. Mattresses. That's okay. okay. Here comes my ad for cat. This is my ad. I'm gonna do an ad for Casper. You gotta sleep. <laughs> and have sex. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and there's only one place where both of those things are cool. <laughs> and it's not just for couches anymore. Someone invented beds, and it's Casper. <laughs> Casper has invented beds. It's a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products. Now they have beds, and you can sleep on them one night at a time. They're but perfectly designed for, <laughs> for humans. No dogs allowed on these fucking beds. And you know, here's the thing. Even what if you're about- someone who doesn't have sex, I highly recommend these beds for the sleeping part. The sleeping part's good, but Justin, what about my weird shapes that make up my body? <laughs> Say a cylinder, and I've got a pyramid, shoulders. What about those? This is still designed for you. You're technically a human. If you're in the U.S. or Canada, you get free shipping and returns. 
Uh, no hassle, by the way, if you're not completely satisfied, which you will be. You could be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. These are great beds. I and you're going to love them. sleeping on them, and you're going to love having sex on them. You can get $50 towards select matches. Or you're going to love not having sex on them. Either way. Either way. There's no law, lo- Travis. Obviously, Travis, it's not binary. You're not either having sex or sleeping. You're not a cicada. <laughs> <laughs> You're either Get eating, the- mating, or sleeping on a gas right. mattress. They're great Get to $50 eat on. To- if you need a place to eat oak leaves, <laughs> check out this mattress. Give $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash brother and using promo code brother at checkout. That's casper.com slash brother and promo code brother, brother, brother for no, just one brother for $50 towards select mattresses. Terms and conditions apply. How about stomps? Yeah. Stomps? These sticky, they're fun stickers. Like, um, maybe... Maybe I shouldn't also do, have you heard of this thing that we all know about, but I'll make it sound like they invented it. Nah, it's more fun the other way. You know stickers, and sometimes they can have Elmo or a, a Pikachu or Mario on them, and you uh-huh. stick them. When you've been a good boy, you can put them on your journal. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you need those for mail so that the mail carrier will pick it up because uh, the mail, mail carriers like stickers. And uh, you need stamps. That's what those are. And stamps.com makes it so that you can print your own postage from home so you don't have to go to the post office. And you can save money with discounts on these wonderful stickers that you can't even get at the post office. Uh, They bring all the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. We're talking about stamps. And then you will print those stamps, and you can use them for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere that you want to send it. Um, And so with stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Holy shit. That's a big old chunk of change. Stamps.com is a no-brainer saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700 trillion small businesses well, already use it just stamps. Say 700,000. <laughs> right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type my brother. That's stamps.com. Enter my brother. I wish they wouldn't. I wish they would just write it different. Enter. That's stamps.com, and then you press the return key, and then you enter my click on the microphone, and then you type in the word "my brother." You insert it. yourself slowly. Oh, you don't. So you da, 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 da. hey, everybody! This is Jake Keith Van Stratton, host of Go Fact Yourself, a live game show here in the Maximum Fun Network. Make sure to listen to our next episode of Go Fact Yourself with guest Kurt Brownowler. I did a show in Flagstaff, Arizona, where the venue just didn't list that the show existed. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and I and it is the smallest crowd that I've ever done a full hour of stand-up for. It was three people. Oh, wow. my God. And Sarah Schaefer. Yes, I love crafting. It's my hobby. I have a craft nook in my home. You do? I do. It has all my supplies displayed in an adorable manner. Wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, that, uh, uh, yes, applause. Applause for a nook. That's Go Fact Yourself here at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get podcasts. Da, 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 da. I don't even have one. I just need to stop you. Let me Google around looking at the page and then I found a page. Here we go. Here it comes. I want a munch. What? What? I want to munch. What? Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Duncan. Uh, we got a Duncan in Huntington. This isn't the Munch Squad. I'm just mentioning now. I'll be able to try the Duncan offerings first hand. You don't do Duncan. you don't do that with the garbage that you bring here for the show, right? No, you're not. You're not actually like experimenting first hand with these things, right? Sometimes, sometimes the picture looks good. Oh, um, and I want to try it, and I probably would have tried it anyway. I get excited. Hey, listen, my Rite Aid got Rite Aid got bought out by Walgreens. And I'm the idiot that walked in after they did the remodel and is like commenting to the employees like, God, it's really bright in here. It looks great. This is so spacious. <laughs> Don't you love this? I'm loving this. You guys loving this? This is not an exaggeration. That I did that. Uh, so Duncan has launched Peeps Coffee. 
and a Peeps donut for spring. Okay. Peep flavor is starting to get into things. There's Peeps creamer now I got and Peeps cereal okay. and Peeps don't have a flavor, it's folks. It's marshmallows with sugar on it, folks. And marshmallow really is puffed sugar. So we're just kind of talking about sugar, mostly folks. Yeah, you're telling me that you've made sugar flavored creamer? Mm-hmm. That's right. And it doesn't taste like anything except sugar. And now that's in a coffee and a donut. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Peeps marshmallow flavored coffee and espresso drinks. And the Peeps donut is topped with an iconic yellow chick. That's right, folks. They just put a chick on the donut. Fucking one right on there. And the shelf life of these bad boys after you remove them from the packaging is about nine seconds before they turn crunchy and inedible. So are they doing these things to order? Because that would be kind of wild. Uh yeah, they're they're just slap they're opening up a dis- discreet package uh as you as you uh pull up and uh slapping it on there. So you can just uh enjoy a donut with a peep on it. Um, now, because I did pick this so quickly, there's not really anything funny about this one because I was just trying to get you to stop talking oh, about shoot. the dirty stuff. Okay. So there's not really anything good. Well, hold uh, on. Let's find that. the. Let's find the. I had a joke earlier. I didn't really have time to do, but maybe it could make it funny. When you Perfect, just yeah. say that, like a uh, sugar flavored creamer again. Say so they did that. Oh, so they made okay. sugar flavored creamer. Mm, sugar creamer. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. First, you take the sugar, and then you put it in the cream. Okay, and Carl's Ju- here. That was a Munch Squad Junior. Then Carl's Junior. Wait, added I have bacon one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, did you have one you wanted I to do? do? You want to get a hand? I, I want to kind of piggyback ball? off of what Griffin said, and this okay. is kind of an alley oop to Justin. Oh, good. Please see where I'm going with this. Sugar creamer, good. more like sugar creamer. <laughs> sugar, sugar creamer. I hardly sugar knew know her. <laughs> that was the three pointer. That's shit. what you got for that. Dang. Uh, the real quick note: Carl's Jr. added a bacon truffle burger and a bacon truffle cheese fries. This image is not going to drive me anywhere except out of my fucking mind. <laughs> this is this is a horrid thing that you should seek out and see for yourself. I'm going to link you guys just so you can see in the chat. There, you can see the oh, image of the burger. One. That's a tall one. It's, that is. It's. Just layers upon layers of horrid, and it's a menu innovation, they call it here, with no trace of irony. It features a decadent truffle-infused white cheddar sauce, which has a deep, rich, and savory flavor, including notes of garlic, toasted onion, and aged parmesan. The burger includes a charbroiled, 100% black Angus beef patty, topped with premium white cheddar truffle sauce, two slices of applewood smoked bacon, crispy onion straws, Swiss cheese, caramelized onions. This thing. They made this. They made that. Uh, they made that, okay? And then at the end, they were like, and mayonnaise? And then, yes, mayonnaise Good. on this thing. No, um, here's a quote about this crime. The launch of our new bacon truffle Angus burger connects back to our dedication to introducing bold, craveable, and unexpected flavors to our menu in interesting ways. This guy had to come up with it. I think they like ran into his office. They're like, we already started recording. Quick, say something about the Black Angus <laughs> Truffle Burger. It um, connects back to our dedication to introducing bold, craveable, and unexpected flavors in interesting ways. You already said unexpected. Yeah, I know, but I'm just making it up as I go. Truffle is traditionally viewed as a rare indulgence. And we're bringing it to the everyday dining experience. <laughs> do you do you trust us, Hardies, with that? And we're we are Hardies. Don't forget, we have a different name, but we're still Hardies. But anyway, do you want this fancy forest mushroom that a pig dug up? I I want to meet the person who's eating this. He's like, look at me, Vicky. I'm eating truffles. I'm like a king. Oh my god. Oh, and that's from. Uh, uh, is uh, infusing the distinct truffle flavor into an entirely new offering for our burger loving customers. Oh, sorry, dirt bag says here. <laughs> Owen says Owen Klein from the chain. During the testing phase, <laughs> imagine this. During the testing phase, Carl's Jr. bacon truffle Angus burger outperformed all benchmarks, <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> including taste, uniqueness, and quality. Sir, it's off the charts 
My God. My God. My God. We've now, done it again. Now we're all sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we're, and it says here, we're thrilled to add the elegant taste of truffle to this. This sandwich has bacon and onion straws and Swiss cheese and hamburger and cheddar truffle sauce and mayonnaise on it. And you are going to take the word elegant and just jam it up your ass like there's no me- there's no meaning behind anything anymore. Yeah, this bad boy. This is a this looks like a wet aggro crag that I have to climb and eat from the top down. This is a big, big mound of, it's mound a of challenging, sand. challenging, a fight. challenging sandwich challenging burger anyway that's all there is to know about that that carl's jr now it doesn't mention specifically hardy's so i don't know if they're leaving hardy's out in the cold on this one this may just be a carl jr ridge a hardy's would never serve a burger like this how about another question please i recently started working in an office setting i only worked there three days a week and i am a graduate student so i'm not close with the full-time staff there's a small basket of candy that sits near the secretary, and I pass it every day on my way in. I grab a few pieces throughout the day. My question is, how many pieces is too many? I feel bad taking too many as I'm not full-time staff, and also, as a grad student, it's hard to pass on free candy. Do I cut back on the candy? Do I just sneakily take more at one time? Do I create a diversion to draw the secretary's attention so they at least know it's not me depleting the resources? And that's Morgan. I mean, when you get to the point where you're doing a little heist every time you get the candy, (laughs) I think you know it's too much candy at that point. Am I wrong in my feeling about the candy at the front desk? That's for visitors, right? Is that isn't that visitor candy as a way of saying, like, welcome here. This isn't for the staff. This is for you, our visitor. Please enjoy a Tootsie Roll. I always thought if somebody puts out a bowl of candy, that's like the basic human way of signaling like i'm someone who likes interaction this reminds me of the funny office uh the office episode american version of course the, yes the, the true the original um and it the the scene where pam puts out all the candy uh and then dwight walks up and he's gonna have a piece of candy and he puts his hand in the bowl and he starts to unwrap it and then uh, Jim jumps up from behind the plant and s- gives him a good scare. And he swallows it and chokes on it. No, no. He gets it out. No, they get they him like it. It's fine. All right. But he so, does pee himself. Yeah, so did we help? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I just, let me, let me, I will let, take this weight off your shoulders. The, like, that you're taking too many because you're not full time. I think that's okay. <laughs> I think, I don't think anyone's like, hey, You only work 20 hours a week. That's worth two pieces of candy. The president of the company doesn't walk in and just up in the bowl into their mouth and say, (laughs) I earned this. This is mine. This is my put in the hours and became the the bar. So this one. Listen, the the real answer, and I hate to give real advice here. It feels weird, but you could offer to buy the next bag of candy. You just do that, but that would defeat the purpose. If this person knew how to buy candy, we wouldn't be in this oh, mess. God, you're right. Okay. Have you heard of stores? <laughs> Listen, people put out candy on their desks at work so for conversation starters, I think. It's yes. a it's a it's the water cooler. Come talk to me about Lost still, because it's all I think about. <laughs> and uh that's why I put this thing on and oh uh Tuesday's right with Maury. Have you read it? Book club this week. <laughs> on Tuesday, weirdly yeah. enough, so get there. Yes, there will be candy. There will be more candy. So get and uh, so nobody read the book again. I see, um, but the, I do notice that the Worthers are gone. Um, that is fine. That's fine. It's uh, this old man kidnaps a child and gives him lessons every Tuesday. Kids nap. Kids kids naps him. <laughs> This kid snaps the kid kid snaps snaps him over and over again. (laughs) Kid snaps the shoot out of him and gives him lessons. And um, you're all leaving because the Worthers are see it. Okay, (laughs) it's visitor candy. I'm gonna stick by my guns. All right, it's visitor candy. Uh, My, I got another. Can I do another? Yes. Okay, dear brothers, I recently started working in a pasta factory on the ravioli line. This job will be perfect for me, except for one thing. I can't stop thinking about eating the uncooked raviolis as they move past me. 
The worst is when I have to stand there on the line and make sure no defective one gets passed. I've come so close to stuffing my pockets and getting the hell out of that sinner's paradise. I can't say goodbye, or I'll surely be caught. <laughs> Please tell me how to sedate the ravioli monster inside of me or how to sneakily get my fill. <laughs> That's from Randy for ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> It's un. It's I just I I want to just hit one thing that it's uncooked. Yeah. It's just it's uncooked. uncooked. <laughs> but I do understand that after a certain point of watching them roll by, that probably like fades to the back of your mind, and you're just like, but now I just want to. Like, yeah. I, I know it's not going to be good. I just want to eat now one. I want it to. Compulsion doesn't have to make complete logical sense. In fact, oftentimes it does not. Although I will say, as somebody who recently learned that they had been um, horribly maligned by his two older brothers who he trusted very much into eating uncooked uh, fettuccine every time we went to Olive Garden, mm-hmm. I do hope that I would have had the good sense not to eat uncooked ravioli because there's a lot of other sort of matter a lot of other sort of material floating around in that in that the, one. The problem is, is if you eat it and anyone sees, you won't. I don't even know that you'd so much get in trouble for eating the product, <laughs> so much as everyone around you would be like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, that's the, not cooked. That's not cooked." The other problem would be if I am working on this line across from you and I saw you finally break and within one deft maneuver just shove even like a defective one into your mouth i am my first assumption will not be oh well, i'm i'm sure that's the first time they've done that it will be <laughs> right. they have done this 400 times a day across from me and this is the first time i have ever noticed or, or worse what if you do it and everyone's like oh thank god someone did it first and then just the whole floor <laughs> Let's erupts eat fucking into place. just a grab and go everyone's going crazy shoving those little <laughs> circles in their oh, this shit. This is the new Footloose. This is Footloose too, but there's not any dancing, and you're just sort it just of the, bowels loose. You're the jeans wearing rebel who comes in and shows everybody it's okay to eat this uncooked <laughs> ravioli you were supposed to be packaging. Wait, but what do you do with the defective ones? Why can't you eat those? Here's how I would do: when you get a defective one, be like, just yell loudly, like, oh. God, no! And then pick it up and throw it across the room. But throw it in the same place every time. Uh-huh. And then at the end of the day, go get a Ziploc baggie and scoop up all your dirty floor ravioli, all your dirty, defective floor ravioli. Go have yourself a treat at home. Or, oh, hey, bring a bag of uncooked ravioli from home. Have them put a sticker on it or something when you come in. And when you get that craving, just pop one of your own in there. <laughs> what if you went to your boss and you're like, listen... I have this problem, and you describe the problem, uh-huh. and it's like I would I don't want to steal things, but I do want to eat the raw ravioli as they roll past me. Can I just keep a tally of the ones I've eaten and and, and just you deduct, deduct it, it from my paycheck at the end of the week? Or alternately, I will pay you a hundred dollars now, and we'll have a kind of a budget that I can dip into whatever yeah. I want. To. It's what like if a you go station. in there and you're like, I I have this problem, I want to eat it, and he's like just puts a finger to his lips and then goes up and like closes the blinds and he's like come with me and opens and there's just like a, there's just a room full of uncooked ravioli he's like whenever you need to you can come in here and satiate your dark passenger where this maybe where they're this waiting robe. for some maybe the, the boss is waiting for somebody to be like hey listen I can't do this anymore. I fucking love these pillowy bad boys too much. I can't work this job this close to them and not eat them. And, he, and he's like, finally, I found special boy I'm going to give my factory to. Someone who loves to eat these d- delicious little but bastards as much as I do. The man who ate all of the uncooked ravioli he wanted, he shit himself to die. <laughs> he shit himself to die. He got a bunch of liver so his stuff in there. It's not it, cooked. It was really, really quite yucky. So Another don't, thing, don't do that, but here are the keys um, to the um, building. Anyway, get in this uh, death box. We're going to fly up. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Is there somebody you hate at work where you could like eat them? And then if you get caught, just be like, actually, I saw Jared. Jared was doing it. And he. I thought it was fine because Jared is beloved here. And I thought it was kind of a fine company and policy to eat two them. for every one I've eaten. Yeah, it's true. Smell his nasty ricotta mouth. And and like they open his locker and you've stuffed a bunch of uncooked oh, crap into it. 
It's really I mean, I was just thinking, why can't you just buy a box of this uncooked ravioli, but it's not the same, right? Like you want it you want it fresh out of mama's kitchen. Yeah. (laughs) But what you can do, what you can do is while you're on the assembly line, you have brought a box of say sixteen uncooked raviolis and then you dump them out onto the line and you real quick run further down the belt and scoop (gasps) up sixteen fresh from mama's kitchen ones. And then no one is the wiser, except for the fact this would be a very conspicuous thing to do. <laughs> Maybe just whenever you go on break for lunch, just say like, okay, I'm on break. And once you clock out, just lay down at the end of the conveyor belt and let them fall on your mouth. You're That's on break, good. they can't fire you? No, could you? they can only could arrest you, start, you. Could you suggest to your bosses that you open the factory to the public and start doing tours? Okay. And one of the ro- the perks of the tour is at the end, you get to pop of sw- one of the sweet raviolis in your mouth. No problem. No questions uncooked, asked. Though? Uncooked. <laughs> you get them uncooked. And then when the tour is open, you take the day off, show up in a fake mustache <laughs> and go to <laughs> go tea. And you just keep doing disguises. <laughs> You do disguises where you can show up and take like, uh, uh, hello, my name is Jim Posterson, and I uh, have heard good things. That's my favorite part of the Louisville Slugger tour is at the end where you get the unfinished bat and you're just allowed to smash it on the ground. (laughs) Just blast it. Everybody gets (laughs) one. Justin, you mentioned disguises. We don't even have to set up this whole plot about the tour. You could just (laughs) dress up in a big hairy suit and run in and start eating all the ravioli right off the belt. And then everybody else there would be like, oh, no, the beast. The beast is back. The beast (laughs) is back. (laughs) And they have to lock themselves in the safety room and start lighting the torches. Now, you might have to do do a little groundwork beforehand and say, like, hey, guys, I was just outside uh, getting something for my car. And I saw a beast running around. And that might take weeks to really establish the myth. You couldn't do it the same day. You couldn't like the morning outside the beast and come in the afternoon. You'd have to spot it when no one else did. Just like, hey, did you guys see the beast? I saw the beast. Okay, but you're going to have to... (laughs) You're gonna have to clear this with your boss first. So go into your boss and you say, um, "Excuse me, uh, hello. Can I can I, can I come yes, in? Yes, yes, come in. It's it's uh, it's me, Furt. Uh huh. Um, I had an idea for one thing that might make it good to work here. Make it make it better. Finally, yes, please. Here. I've been waiting for some kind of suggestion on what would make it good to work here. Please tell me. <laughs> I thought it would be um. Exciting if sometimes a werewolf showed Ooh. up. Not a werewolf, werewolf. Not a werewolf. The beast, please. The beast. Oh, th- uh, th- thank you. Thank you, other boss. That's a much better suggestion. I can see we're on the uh, same page here. Junior boss, about please this. do not treat him with the same level of respect. <laughs> Sorry, so you, can, you, can tell from, you can tell from my big diaper. <laughs> so, um, it might be a good thing. Sometimes it might make it fun and exciting. If, uh-huh. Um, and now, what would this if, beast do? Would he come in and do maybe a funny dance or wave did, some yeah, pom sure. poms around? Yeah, sure, whatever. And then he would probably eat some of the ravioli, like like he Pac-Man would come in with a big got... steaming plate of it that he had made at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, would he bring his own beast. boiling water? That the oh, baby he, boss asked the boss. <laughs> asked a great question. No, he would just come in and um, he would just kind of he would just kind of eat them raw. Ooh. He would just kind of eat them raw like a beast. Mm, I Sometimes. I do understand the connection, but I don't know if that's uh. Advice. I'll do it. It's no problem. Would, I'll do you it. Do that for us. I'll be the beast and I'll make it like a fun. It'd be fun to work I, here. You, you're awe-inspiring, son. Your level of commitment. You're the hero we need. Eat the uncooked pasta donuts. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. I really love working here. I'm thinking of tortellini. The beast. And I meant, oh, ravioli is like little pillows, isn't it? Oh, fuck. Wait, I you quit. Run this, you run this. Yes. Yeah. I'm cu- Listen, it was my father's business. I, I wanted to be a tortellini man. Now you're the, But now you're the diaper one because you messed up. We got to switch off again. Uh, this has been our podcast, my brother, my brother, and me. Um, and we hope you that you have enjoyed it. Um, we we are, I guess we're current. Cur- well, hey, we're about to be, I guess, in San Jose and in Salt Lake City. And there may be tickets for them if you want to come see us. Uh, we would very much love it if you would uh, uh, join us there. Like I said, I think there's a few seats left, not a ton. But uh, that's going to be April 3rd in San Jose at City National Civic and Salt Lake. It's Abravanel Hall. 
April 4th. So um, that's McElroy.family. If you go there and click tours, you can find the links to tickets. Uh, we're going to be in um, San Jose with the Adventure Zone 2 on April 2nd, but I think that's sold out now. Um, but, uh, and, and please, 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 if you have questions for those shows and Yahoo's, please send those in. There's still time. Yeah. Also, if, if you're in Denver or anywhere near it, um, I'm going to be at Dink. Uh, in the middle of April, April 13th and 14th in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I'm doing a couple different events. There's like a, a VIP Q&A meet and greet thing I'm doing. Um, and I'm working on like a screening of a movie thing, uh, like a B movie that I'm going to kind of riff over. Uh, a bunch of different stuff. I'll, I'll tweet more schedules out for it. But I'd love to see you there. Uh, April 13th and 14th in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for these for a theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed, uh, which you should be, you know, cranking on the reg. Uh, and big thanks to Maximum Fun uh, for having us on the network. We You just heard us for two straight weeks talk about how great this network is and being a part of it uh, is. And um, yeah, we, we it wasn't just bullshit to get your money. Uh, we really mean it. And go listen to some great new shows like Mission to Zix. Go listen to Beef and Dairy Network and uh, Who Shot ya and all the shows on MaximumFun.org. Catch up on Mission to Zix. They just started their third season, their new show on the network. Go check them out. I You might see uh, a brother on there at some point here in the near future. So just pick it up like 301. It's a sort of sci-fi improvised comedy show, but like you can pick it up. Uh, you'll probably want to go back and listen to more, but uh, go check it out. You will like it. If you're a fan of stuff like um, Welcome to the Magic Tavern, uh, then you will you will enjoy Mission Oh, X. yeah. Quick plug, too. ZYXX, by um, the way. We got this with Mark Gagliardi and Hal Lublin, who have oh, had yeah. Metroid guests on all month. Uh, Justin Sidney be- did Best West Wing Character. Um, I did an episode that I don't think is out yet, but it's, uh, well, I won't say it, but I did an episode that's coming out soon. Dad did an episode about like best Hanna-Barbera character, I think. And, oh, and Sydney, my wife, Sydney, uh, was on the JV club with Janet Varney, uh, most recent episode by now. It's probably the second. Most Rachel recent. was on uh, that recently as well. And um, I was on, 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 can I pick your dog? Talking about our new dog, Lily. So dang, guys, we're all it. over the place. Yeah. It's a great network. One last thing before you go. It's it's the new month, and that means new merch. Go to MacroyMerch.com. Yes, no, please. Um, final Yahoo. This one is sent in by a couple folks. Thank you. It's uh, an anonymous Yahoo Answers user, so I'm going to call them uh, Jump Asks. Why does frying tomatoes turn them green? <gasps> <laughs> oh my, my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad, square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Justin McElroy. And I'm Sydney McElroy. And together we're the hosts of Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine. What does that mean for you, the podcast consumer? Well, it means that you're going to get a lot of stories about how we used to do weird stuff to people in order to try to fix them. Do you know that we used to think diseases were caused by bad smells? And that we used to eat mummies for medicine? That's super funny. I kind of like it. Well, thanks, and we hope you'll kind of like our show, Sawbones, a marital tour of misguided medicine. It's available every Friday wherever fine podcasts are sold or at its beautiful, picturesque home at MaximumFun.org.